Hilchas Kiddush HaChodesh, Perik Tes, and Yud. These two prakim in one sentence are essentially a machlekes, two opinions on the length of the Shnas HaChama, of the solar year, and hence on the length of the Tkufas, the four seasons of the year. If I counted correctly, the Rambam in the course of these two prakim delineates 15 nafkaminas, 15 ramifications that arise as a result of this argument. It's important to appreciate that in the context, the wider context of Hilchas Kiddush HaChodesh, these two prakim are not really here or there. They're not part of the complex computations that Bezdin had to use to figure out if the moon could be sighted. That's Perik Yudalif to Yutes. They're also not directly relevant to the calculations around the Meilad, which the Rambam explained in the earlier prakim. They could best be seen as a nispach, as an addendum to the concept of the leap year. Understanding the tkufis and the length of the solar year will help us better understand the mechanisms of why it is that every couple of years we're adding a month to the calendar and how that helps to align the solar and lunar year. These two prakim do get into the weeds, into great detail around these matters, but they're self-standing. They don't affect the understanding of the previous prakim or of the later prakim. Throughout the year, the sun travels about one degree per day along the ecliptic, along the Gagal Hamazalis. This journey around the world can be divided into four quarters, four seasons, called in the Rambam the four Tkufas, Tkufas Nisan, Tkufas Tammuz, Tkufas Tishrei, Tkufas Tevis. Tkufas Nisan will be the point at which the sun is at zero degrees on its orbit. At that point, it's aligned with the equator. That's why in English it's called the vernal equinox. Equinox means, it comes from Latin, it means equal night. Because at that time, day and night are of equal hours. Tkufas Nisan continues until the sun reaches 90 degrees, at which point it's most northerly relative to the equator. That position is called the summer solstice. Solstice also comes from Latin. It means, sol means sun, and stis comes from the word stopped. Sun stopped. It's the maximum distance the sun will reach from the equator. At that point, Tkufas Tammuz begins. Tkufas Tammuz continues until the sun reaches 180 degrees on its orbit, when it's once again aligned with the equator. That position is called the autumnal equinox. And that's the beginning of Tkufas Tishrei. Kufas Tishrei continues until the sun reaches 270 degrees on its orbit. At that point, it's most southerly relative to the equator. That's called the winter solstice, and it's the beginning of Tkufas Tevis. And Tkufas Tevis, of course, continues until the sun returns to its original position at zero degrees, at which point Tkufas Nisan starts again, and the cycle continues. The question is, how long is this journey? How much time does it take from when the sun is at zero degrees till it's once again at zero degrees? Well, last class I told you that it takes 365 days and a quarter. 365 days and six hours. If you look at it that way, the four seasons, each quarter of the year, is neatly 91 days and seven and a half hours. Divide 365 days and six hours into four, and you get 91 days and seven and a half hours. However, that is only one opinion. That's the opinion that the Rambam goes with during the entire Perik test. It's called Tkufas Shmuel. But there's another opinion which the Ramam discusses in Perik Yud. That's called Tkufas Rav Adel. Rav Adel in the Gemara tells us that the solar year is actually slightly less than 365 and a quarter days. You have the number here on the chart. It's 365 days, 5 hours, 997 chalakim. And here the Ramam brings in a new unit of time, a rega, 176th of a chilek, 48 regayim. This is a tiny discrepancy between Tkufas Rav Adda and Tkufas Shmuel. Remember, an hour is 1,080 chalakim. So we're already over here, 997 chalakim into the sixth hour. It's less than 100 chalakim of difference. But it accumulates big time in the big picture, as we'll soon see. Regardless, according to Tkufas Rav Adda, each individual Tkufa is also not just 91 days, seven and a half hours. You can't divide it so neatly. It's a little bit less. It's 91 days, 7 hours, 519 chalakim, and 31 regoyim. So in your head, it's not so easy to do the math between tkufa and tkufa. According to tkufa Shmuel, since the number 91 is divisible by 7, if you know when a given tkufa is, all you have to do is add 7.5 hours and you have the next tkufa. On the weekday calendar, at least. According to Rav Adda, you have to start adding all these little numbers. It's harder to, uh, harder to compute. But at any rate, that's the difference. One opinion holds the solar year is 365 days and a quarter, and one opinion holds that it's slightly less than that, and of course the first ramification is the length of the tkufa. There's another ramification. 
We learned in the last class that 12 lunar revolutions, that means for the moon to make it around the earth 12 times, which we call a year, takes only 354 days. The sun takes 365 and something days. That's a difference of almost 11 days. What are the exact numbers for this? Well, it depends how long exactly the solar year is. According to Tkufa Shmuel, the annual discrepancy between the solar and lunar years are 10 days, 21 hours, and 204 halakim. According to Tkufa Rav Ada, you can see on the chart, it's 10 days, 21 hours, and a bit less, 121 halakim and 48 regayim. Why is this discrepancy important? Well, we remember that every couple of years, because of this discrepancy, we create an Ibrayar. We add a month to the year, and now we have 13 months in our calendar. This helps to align the solar and lunar years. Well, if you do the math, according to Tkufa Shmuel, every 19 years, the solar and lunar calendars will pretty much align. But there's still a small discrepancy. The She'edis Hamachzer, 1 hour, 485 chalakim. According to Tkufa Shav Ada, however, every 19 years, if you do the math, there is no difference between the solar and lunar calendars at all. The sun's orbit and the moon's orbit come into perfect alignment. And that becomes our third ramification of the Machlekes about the length of the solar year. The length of the Tkufa, the annual discrepancy between solar and lunar calendars, and the discrepancy at the end of 19 years. According to Shmuel, it's still an hour and 485 chalakim. According to Rav Ada, it's no discrepancy at all. This, and understanding this well, brings us to the next part of the conversation. In order to be able to compute Mildes and Tkufis, the Rambam gave us a simple formula. He told us how much time there is between one Mildes and the next, and so all you have to do is just add. And he told us how much time there is between one Tkufa and the next, so all you have to do is just add. But you do have to know when was the first Mildes and when was the first Tkufa. That's where we begin all the calculations. So the Rambam tells us that the first Mailad was Baharad. Monday, five hours into Monday, 204 Chalakim. He also tells us that that was a Mailad of Tishrei. All Mildas are counted from Tishrei. Now, when we're dealing with the sun and the Tkufas, we have to know when was the first Tkufa. Well, the first thing we have to know is that the first Tkufa is going to be Tkufas Nisan. That's what the Gemara says. For Mildas, we count from Tishrei. For Tkufas, we count from Nisan. So, when was the first Tkufas Nisan? Well, if you look in the Rambam, this is what the Rambam says. In Perik Tes, he says, according to the opinion that the solar year is 365 days and a quarter, Tkufas Nisan preceded Mailad Nisan by Zat Tarmab. The first Tkufas Nisan preceded the first Meilad Nisan by a lead of seven days, nine hours, 642 Chalakim. When you look in Perik Yud, however, the Rambam says, according to the Cheshbon that believes that the solar year is slightly less than 365 days and a quarter, Tkufas Nisan, the first Tkufas Nisan, preceded the first Meilad Nisan by just nine hours and 642 Chalakim. Doesn't mention the seven days. What does this mean? Why is there this difference? How come according to Perik Tess it's so drastic and according to Perik Yud it's so small? Let me explain. There's a major machlekes in the Gemara as to when the world was created. One opinion maintains Bria Sa'ilam was in Tishrei. This means Cheshit Simei Bereshis was Chafei Elo and Adam Bereshim was created on Friday, Aleph Tishrei Reish Hashanah. The other opinion holds, no, Bria Sa'ilam was in Nisan. Cheshit Simei Bereshis began on Chafei Adar, Adam Bereshim was created on Friday, Aleph Nisan. I mentioned before that the Mailad, the first Mailad, which was a Mailad of Tishrei, was Monday, five hours into Monday, 204 Chalakim. Now, of course, this cannot be an actual Mailad. The sun and moon only began to function on Wednesday. What does it mean there was a Mailad, there was an alignment of the sun and the moon on Monday? Well, this is called a Mailad Taihu, a theoretical Mailad. We use it for computational purposes. It indeed is not an actual Mailad. It's as though if time were to exist before time existed, when would the Mailad be? If we traced it backwards, when would the first Mailad be? The first Mailad would be the Mailad of Tishrei, Baharad, that's a theoretical Mailad. Using the formulas that Amam has given us about how to add 29 days, 12 hours, 
793 halakim to reach the next mailad, we can compute that the next mailad Tishrei, after Baharad, 12 months later, was Vav Yud Dalit. Friday, 14 hours into Friday. That would be Friday morning, 8 a.m. Because again, time begins from 6 p.m. the previous night. We can further calculate that the midpoint between these two Mailads, which would be the Mailad of Nisan, six months from the first Mailad Tishrei, would be on Dat Tarmab. Wednesday, nine hours into Wednesday, and 642 Chalakim. These numbers are not contended. You can see on the chart, both according to Perik Tess and according to Perik Yud. First is Baharad, then is Dat Tarmab, and then is Vav Yud Dalit. But you do see a machlekes about the timing. See, according to both opinions, Baharad Mailad is a Mailad Tayhu. That's a pre-creation Mailad. According to both opinions, the next Mailad Tishrei was a Mailad Shal Yitzira, a post-creation Mailad. But what about the Mailad Nisan right in the beginning, or right in the middle there? Well, according to the opinion that the world was created in Tishrei, that Mailad Nisan was also a theoretical Mailad. It's six months before creation. But according to the opinion that the world was created in Nisan, which is Perik Yud, well, that was the first actual Mailad, Shal Yitzira. That Mailad took place on Wednesday, nine hours into Wednesday. That was the Wednesday of Sheshus and Eberashis. This is a very, very fundamental machlekes. And let me explain a little bit more why. The first kufa that Ambam says was Bitchilas Lil Revi. The first kufas Nisan was Tuesday at 6 p.m. The first moment of Wednesday, the sun was set at zero degrees and began to function. That's not under contention. What is under contention is, was that a theoretical tkufa or a real tkufa? Again, according to Perik Tess, this is pre-creation. It's a tkufa shal tayu. According to Perik Yud, that is the actual first kufa. Tuesday night, 6 p.m. of creation was the first kufas nisa. This leads to a very interesting conclusion. And please follow me carefully. According to Perik Yud, both tkufas nisan and Mailad nisan were actual tkufas and mildes. They both took place on the first Wednesday of creation. Tkufas Nisan at Wednesday, Tuesday night, 6 p.m. And Moilad Nisan, 9 hours and 642 Chalakim later. According to Perik Tess, however, both Tkufas Nisan and Moilad Nisan were theoretical. In that theoretical world, Tkufas Nisan preceded Moilad Nisan not just by 9 hours, 642, Tess Tarmab, as the Rambam writes in Perik Yud, but by Zat Tarmab more than a week. How so? Because we're dealing with theoretical tkufas and mildas, we have to work backwards from the post-creation tkufa and mildas. Those are the ones that actually happened, and pre-creation theoretical stuff are worked or extrapolated from them. So we know that mildas tishrei, post-creation, the first one was Friday morning, 8 a.m. We also know, based on the fact that the first tkufa was on Wednesday, Tuesday night, 6 p.m., if we do the math, that each tkufa is seven and a half hours after the previous one, the tkufa's tishrei, which would be the first post-creation tkufa, was 15 hours after Tuesday night, 6 p.m. That comes out to Wednesday morning, 9 a.m. So we have Wednesday morning, 9 a.m. as being the first post-creation tkufa. We have Friday morning, 8 a.m. as the first post-creation moilat. How much is the difference? One hour, one day, and 23 hours. So at the time of creation, in in the Tishrei of creation, the sun had a lead on the moon of one day and 23 hours. When the sun was at zero degrees, it would take another day and 23 hours for the moon to reach that point and create the first Mailut. Well, now let's do a little backwards math. Every year, we mentioned, according to the Kufa Shmuel, the sun accumulates a lead of 10 days and 21 hours in some. That means that every Kufa during the year, it creates a lead of a quarter of that amount. Two Kufas creates a lead of half of that amount. How much is half of 10, 21, 204? 
It's five days, 10 hours, 642 chalakim. So relative to the lead that the sun had over the moon at Tishrei time, if you went backwards six months, the lead would increase by five days, 10 hours, and 642 chalakim. So if we went back to the Nisan pre-creation, the Nisan Shal Taihu, when the first Kufa and the first Mayla took place, based on the fact that there was a one day, 23 hour differential at Tishrei time, and that differential should increase between the sun and the moon by five days, 10 hours, and 642 chalakim, we arrive at the fact that Kufa's Nisan preceded Mailad Nisan by seven days, nine hours, 642 chalakim. One day, 23 hours, plus five days, 10 hours, and 642 is 7, 9, 642. Hence, the Rambam writes in Perek Tes, Tkufas Nisan, Haisa Kredem Meilad Nisan, Bezayin Yamim, Tes Shoyz, Betafresh Membez Chalakim. All of this does not hold true for Perek Yud, because in Perek Yud, Tkufas Nisan and Meilad Nisan happened on the actual Wednesday of Sheshach and Meberashach. One happened on Tuesday night, one happened Wednesday morning, with the simple difference of Tes Tarmab, nine hours and 642 Chalakim. And now the plot thickens. Before I go there, I just want to review what I just said in the chart. You can see the date of creation according to Perik Tes is Tishrei, according to Perik Yud, it's Nisan. The first Moilat of Toyu was Baharad, according to both opinions. But according to Perik Tes, the Moilat Nisan was also a Moilat Shal Toyu. The first Moilat post creation, according to Tkufa Shmuel, was the Tishrei one, Vav Yud Dalet. And according to Tkufa Shmuel, Ada was actually the Nisan one. The first Kufa, according to everybody, was Tchilas Lil Revi, but according to Perek Tes, that was Toyu. According to Perek Yud, that was Yitzira. And the first Kufa of Yitzira, according to Perek Tes, was Dalid Tesvav, 15 hours into Wednesday. And hence, the first Kufa preceded the first Meilad Nisan by a different amount. According to Kufa Shmuel, it was by Zat Tarmab. How did we arrive at that conclusion? We took the lead of Tkufas Tishrei over Meilad Tishrei, which is one day and 23 hours, plus half the lead of a solar year, working backwards to Tkufas for 5, 10, 6, 42, for a total of 7, 9, 6, 42. However, according to Tkufas Rav Ada, it's simply Tes Tarmab. No additional leads here because both the Tkufa and the Meilad are post-creation. As I said, the plot thickens. The reason the plot thickens is because we have to remember that according to Tkufas Shmuel, even after every 19 years, there is a remainder of one hour and 485 chalakim between the sun and the moon. And what this means is that every 19 years, Meilad Nisan is happening one hour and 485 chalakim earlier relative to the last machzer. The lunar year is beginning its new machzer one hour and 485 chalakim earlier than the last one. Said in other words, the gap, the pre-creation gap of 7, 9, 6, 42 between the sun and the moon is shortening by one hour and 485 chalakim every 19 years. According to Perik Yud, everything is consistent. The moon was test tarmab before, the sun was test tarmab before the moon at the beginning of creation. And every 19 years, the sun and the moon just reach that position once again with a difference of test time out. However, according to Tkufa Shmuel, because of the one hour 485 chalakim discrepancy, Meilad Nisan is happening relative, progressively earlier and earlier. So that every 19 years, the gap of Zat Tarmab is getting shorter by 1485. Hence, if at year zero of creation, there was a difference of seven, seven days, nine hours, 642 chalakim, after one machzer, the beginning of year 20, now there's only a difference of seven hour, seven days, eight hours, and 151 chalakim. After 10 machzerim, now we're at the year 190, there's a difference, or the gap has been shortened by 14 hours. After 100 machzerim, and now we're at the year 1900, the gap has shortened by 144 hours. That's six days. So whereas at year zero, Tkufas Nisan preceded Meilad Nisan by seven days. Now it's only preceding Meilad Nisan by one day. 
And this is coming because of the accumulated discrepancy between the sun and the moon every 19 years. Take another 100 machzorim, and now you're at the year 3800 in creation. Tkufas Nisan has actually surpassed Mailad Nisan. The Tkufa begins happening after the Mailad. Another 100 machzorim, and now we're much closer to our times in the year Tafshin 5700. Tkufas Nisan has surpassed by even another six days. This leads to the famous question that I've asked in the Sikha, the famous Sikha in Chilak Tazayan, that ultimately the Tkufa will end up happening after Pesach, and our calendars will once again be messed up. Pesach won't be falling in the spring. But regardless, understand that according to Tkufa Shmuel, the space is closing. The gap, or the lead, that the sun had over the moon in the beginning of creation is progressively getting shorter and shorter. And that's only in Perik Tes. According to Perik Yud, everything remains consistent. This concept will help us understand better the two calculations that the Rambam offers, both in Perik Tes and in Perik Yud, for how to reach a given Tkufa. And it will also explain the differences between the two. Why in Perik Tes it's one method, and why in Perik Yud it's another method. And before we go there, let's take a look at the chart and just review what we've said. The first Tkufa, according to Perik Tes, preceded the first Mailad Nisan by Zat Tarmab. Seven full days, nine hours, 642 halakim. According to Tkufa's Ravada, it was only a lead of test tarmab. This leads us to the conclusion that every machzer, the first Tkufa's Nisan precedes the first Mailad Nisan. Well, according to Perik Yud, it's consistent, test tarmab. According to Tkufa's Shmuel, it's Zat Tarmab minus one hour, 485 halakim per machzer because of that closing gap. Hence, and now we take a look at the next row in the chart. If you want to know the first Kufas Nisan of any given Machzer, you're at the beginning of a Machzer, a 19-year cycle has closed, and now you want to know when will Kufas Nisan be in the first year of this next one. Well, according to Perik Yud, it's extremely simple. You don't have to do anything. All you have to know is when is Meilad Nisan, and whenever Meilad Nisan is, nine hours, 642 Chalakim before that, is Kufas Nisan. Because every 19 years, the sun and the moon return to the exact same position. According to Tkufa Shmuel, it's a bit more complex. What you essentially have to do is, and this is the way I wrote it on the top part of the, of the box, you have to subtract Zat Tarmab from Meilad Nisan. First figure out when Meilad Nisan is. Subtract that lead of seven days, nine hours, 642 halakim. But you're not done yet. You have to add one hour, 485 halakim per machzer. In other words, first you bring it back. You know what Melod Nisan is? Bring it back seven days and then bring it forward one hour and 485 halakim per machzer that has elapsed. The way that Rambam phrases it is a bit different. Instead of starting with Melod Nisan, going back and going forward, he starts with the leftovers of the machzerim. He says, add up all the 1485s of all the machzerim that have happened until now. Subtract from that zat tarmab, which will bring you into the negative, and then add that negative number to meilad nisan. Essentially, two ways of saying the same thing. Either you start with meilad nisan, you move back and you move forward, or you start with the forward, you move all the way back and move the negative number forward. But either way, the point is that only in periodic test do you have to account for that one hour and 485 progressive addition. The next thing is, what if you don't want to know Tkufas Nisan of a cycle? You want to know Tkufas Nisan of a given year within a machzer. Now here, it gets complex both for Perik Tes and for Perik Yud. Because the alignment, even according to Perik Yud, only happens at the end of 19 years. During the 19 years, the sun is consistently achieving a lead over the moon. Even according to Tkufas Ravada, you have to have leap years every couple of years. After one year, there's a 10-day difference. After two years, there's a 20-day difference. Even after three years, when you add a leap year, there's still a three-day difference. It doesn't make up for all the days. So here, you're going to have to do a little bit more math. And again, I'm going to start with Perik Yud, because it's more straightforward, and then we'll go to Perik Tes. For Tkufas Ravada, Let's say you're standing in year seven of the Machzer. Six years have elapsed, and you want to know when is Tkufas Nisan of the seventh year. 
So first thing you have to do is you have to add up all the solar year leads of the current machzer. What does that mean? Since according to Rav Ada, every 19 years, sun and moon come into complete alignment. When you're dealing within a given machzer, you don't have to deal with any previous machzerim. Don't take anything previous into account, only deal with this machzer. And you begin with however many years have passed in this machzer, add up all the solar leads. So if it's six years, and you know that over six years, each year it's 10 days, 21 hours, etc., add all of that up together. The next thing you want to do is subtract test tarmab, because that's the essential lead that the sun has over the moon. That's the lead you always come back to after 19 years. That has to be compensated for. So whatever number you've reached, take off nine hours, 642 halakim. Then, the number that you have left, divide it by lunar months. Now a lunar month, as the Ramam has defined it, is 29 days, 12 hours, 793 halakim. Take those groups away from your number. So again, you're in year seven of the Mahzer, you've added up all the solar leads, 10, 21, and some, that leads you to about 77 days or something, 76 days, subtract those nine hours, and now start subtracting groups of 29, 12, 793. Why are we subtracting these groups? Because those are the months that have been already added in the Mahzer as leap months. Those have helped us align the sun and the moon further. There isn't a 76 day difference between the sun and the moon. 60 of those days have become, have become two Ibrayars. We're down to about 16 days and some. That differential, what remains after you've taken away the groups of the lunar months, add that to Meilad Nisan, and now you have the Tkufa of the given year. Now you'll be able to figure out when the Tkufa is. Notice that it's adding it to Meilad Nisan, because typically in the Machzer, the Tkufa Nisan will be after Meilad Nisan. This is all according to Perik Yud. According to Perik Tes, because there's a consistently growing discrepancy at the end of every machzer, you have to account for that. You can't just start with your current machzer. You have to go back and see one second. Every 19 years that has passed since creation has created a one hour, 485 chalak in difference. So the first thing you have to do is, as it says in the box, is you have to add up all the machzer remainders. Once you have all the machzer remainders, now you follow the same steps as Peter Gyut. You take all the machzer remainders, then you take all the solar, le- solar year leads of the current machzer, which is whatever, those 10, hour, 10 days, 21 hours and some. Then you subtract, not test tarmab, remember, subtract zat tarmab, because that, according to the Kufa Shmuel, is the essential lead that the sun has over the moon. And you have to compensate for that. So subtract those seven days, nine hours, 642 halakim. And then divide it by the lunar months, take away groups of 29, 12, 793, because those are the months that have become Ibrayars and have helped align the sun and the moon further, and add the remainder to Meilad Nisan. And so we can see here that the difference between the two Cheshbrainas comes from the fact that according to Tkufa Shmuel, there's a 1485 discrepancy, and according to Tkufa Shrav Ada, that discrepancy does not exist. The last two Cheshbrainas, at the end of Pedic tests that the Rambam offers for the Tkufa, you notice, have no parallel in Pedic Yud. At the end of Pedic tests, the Rambam tells us there's a calculation if you want to just determine the weekday of the Tkufa, and there's a calculation if you want to just determine the date of the month of the Tkufa. As we're going to see, those only work for Pedic tests. They don't work for Pedic Yud. But let me first start with explaining Pedic tests. Until now, in our discussions, we've been dealing with the magic number of 19 years. Because the 19-year number is the time of alignment between the sun and the moon. However, for the purposes of the next two cheshbainas, we're not going to be dealing with that number. Essentially, these two cheshbainas have nothing to do with anything we talked about. All you have to know going into these two cheshbainas is the following. According to Tkufa Shmuel, that the solar year is 365 and a quarter, Tkufas, as I mentioned at the beginning of this year, divide neatly into 91 days and seven and a half hour units. Which means, as I said, that if you want to know the weekday of a given Tkufa, all you have to know is the previous Tkufa and just add seven and a half hours. The first Tkufas Nisan was Tuesday night, 6 p.m. Well, the next one is going to be, Tkufas Tammuz will be Wednesday night at 1.30 a.m. It's just seven and a half hours later because 91 days is divisible by seven. If you do the math, from one Tkufas Nisan 
to the next Kufas Nisan is just a movement of 30 hours. Seven and a half plus seven and a half plus seven and a half plus seven and a half equals 30. So if you know when a certain Tkufas Nisan is, just add 30 hours and that'll bring you to the weekday of the next Tkufas Nisan. In the case of creation, the first Tkufas Nisan is Tuesday night, 6 p.m. The next Tkufas Nisan will be 30 hours later, Wednesday night at 12 a.m. If you do further math, you will come to see that at the end of 28 years, the Tkufas Nisan will once again return to being Tuesday night at 6 p.m. This actually has a ramification in halacha. That's why every 28 years we do Bircha Sachama. We're blessing the fact that the sun has come back to its original position at the time of creation. Tuesday night, 6 p.m., it reaches zero degrees. So, the Rambam says, if you want to determine the weekday and the hour, you don't care when in the month it is, all you want to know is the weekday and the hour of Tkufas Nisan of any year, doesn't depend on Machzairim again, there's no 19 years over here. Any year you're in, you want to know when is the weekday and hour of Tkufas Nisan, well, here's all you have to do. All you have to do is divide all the years that have passed into groups of 28, because you can be certain that at the end of 28 years, Tkufa has again been at Tuesday night, 6 p.m., so you don't care about those 28 years. After you reach the remainder that's less than 28 years, well, then you follow the simple formula of year to year being moved by 30 hours. So you just take 30 hours per year, and that should bring you to the Tkufa. So let's say you're in year number five of the Machzer. So 30 times five is 150. Just add 150 hours, starting from Matzah Shabbos, the beginning of the week, Saturday night, 12 p.m., uh, 6 p.m., and after 150 hours, you've arrived at the Tkufa. There's a slight problem, though. The first Tkufa wasn't on a Saturday night, it wasn't at the beginning of a week. It was on a Tuesday night. Therefore, the Rambam says, just add three days. Whatever number of hours you come to, start from Saturday night, add three days, so you get straight to Tuesday night, 6 p.m., and then do your 150 hours, and you've reached the Tkufa. Again, this is a self-standing cheshben, just to appreciate the weekday and hour of the Tkufa. Now you can see why it's obvious that according to Perik Yud, this calculation would never work. Since according to Tkufa Sarad Ada, Tkufas do not divide neatly into units of 91 days and seven and a half hours, this math would be impossible. First of all, at the end of 28 years, the sun does not return to Tuesday night at 6 p.m. In fact, according to some Sfarim, and if you do the math properly, you'll see, it takes thousands and thousands of years if the sun were to ever return to the exact same place and moment of Tuesday 6 p.m. Tkufas Nisan. So there is no such unit as 28 years that can be divided to determine the weekday of the Tkufa. Hence, the Ramam doesn't bring this Cheshben in Perik Yud. The final Cheshben is when a person wants to determine the date of the month of Tkufas Nisa. For this Cheshben, the Ramam is extremely approximate, very inexact, because it really doesn't have any uh, benefits directly relevant onto Kiddush HaKadosh. Just for curiosity, if a person wants to know the date of the month. What you have to do is, you have to go into the equation already armed with some info. You have to already have done the previous calculation so that you know what weekday and hour the Tkufa is. You don't know the date of the month yet, but you know what weekday and hour it is. And you have to also go into the equation armed with the info of when Rish Chodesh Nisan will be. That means you already know Meilad Nisan, you know when the moon is conjuncting with the sun, and uh, when they're going to set Rish Chodesh. You know, you know what date that's going to be. If you have the weekday of the Tkufa and Rish Chodesh Nisan, then you follow the following method. First, take 11 days per year of the current machzer. So if you're in year seven of the machzer, you would take 66 days for the six years that have passed. Why these 11 days? This is an approximation of the lead of the solar year. It's really 10 days, 21 hours, but then I'm gonna just round it up, take 11 days per year. Okay. Then you have to add seven days. And then Ammon says you have to add seven days beyomim elu. In these days, you would have to add seven days. What does that mean? This can be understood based on what I explained earlier in the class. That according to Tkufa Shmuel, the progressive accumulating discrepancies of one hour, 485 chalakim per machzer, cause that the gap between Tkufa Nisan and Melod Nisan become smaller and smaller. To the point that later in history, Tkufa Nisan actually begins to happen after Melod Nisan. If you do the math, at the Rambam's times, 
Tkufas Nisan was delayed by around eight days after Mulad Nisan. So you have to compensate for that. And the Ramam therefore just says, add seven days. The Yamim Elu. Take those seven days. It's a current rounded remainder of all prior Machzairim after a rounded subtraction of the first Kufa's lead. Which basically means you start with the first Kufa's lead of Zat Tarmab, you take that away, and you see how much that Kufa has begun to surpass, which as I said before was about eight days. Then, once you have all of this lead, you do divide the remainder by 30. Earlier in the Cheshbon, it was divided by lunar months, which is 29 days, 12 hours, 793. Here that Amam again approximates and just says, divide it by 30. Those will give you the rounded leap months that have already been incorporated into the calendar to further align the sun and the moon. After you conclude this division by 30, you start counting the remaining days from Meshchidosh Nisan. Or if it's a leap year from Meshchidosh Adar Sheni, because that means that just that year they've added the extra month to the, to the calendar. And start counting from Meshchidosh. Wherever the, the number lands on, that's the Tkufa. Now, you already know when the weekday of the Tkufa is. So if those two numbers match up, you know the Tkufa's on a Monday, and the count brings you to a Monday, beautiful. But what if you see the Tkufa is on a Thursday, according to your weekday calculation, and this calculation lands you up on a Monday? No problem. Just keep adding day after day till you reach the Tkufa. The reason why you can keep adding day after day is because of all the rounded discrepancies we gave before. All the approximations that the Ramam used in this calculation could cause that this should be off by a maximum of three days. It's a Pele Godel that it should be by four days. And without getting too complex into explaining why that Pele Godel could happen. But there, there, there could be a discrepancy of three days between the weekday calculation and the date of the month calculation. That's not a problem. Just add those three days and you arrive at the Tkufa. And again, there's no parallel for this for this Cheshben in Tkufa's Rav Ada because Tkufa's Rav Ada doesn't have the previous round calculation to find the weekday. And since you have to be armed with that info going into this calculation, it's impossible for it to have in, in uh, Tkufas Rav Adah, and that's why the Ramadan doesn't bring that Cheshben in Perek Yud. In conclusion, the Rambam mentions that he believes that the Tkufas Rav Ada was the one on which Bezdin would rely on in terms of their calculations. Of course, the Rambam has to say that, and it's, it's, very, um, it's very relevant to understand that, because we've seen that according to the Kufas Rav Ada, every 19 years, there's no more discrepancy. Sun and the moon are equally relative to each other in the same position and never changes. According to the Kufas Shmuel, it's always changing by an hour and 485 halakim. So he has to say that. You know, I leave that the Kufas Rav Ada was the one on which they would be Seymach. By the way, it's just interesting to note that the Kufas Rav Ada believes that the world was created in Nisan, which basically means that halacha is paskening that the world was created in Nisan, and yet we observe a Shoshana as the day the world was created in Tishrei. That's an interesting point to point out. At the end of Perek Yud, the Rambam tells us, however, that both according to the Kufas Shmuel and according to the Kufas Rav Ada, whatever day we arrive at Kufas Nisan being, we should know is not really the true Kufa. The true Kufa is about two days later. And this concept will become clear in our future Shiurim.